Lily! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. Gold was discovered in the Black Hills, a new wave of emigration swept into the western United States. Along with the honest settlers came gamblers, criminals, and confidence men, and the mining towns ran wide open. It was in the hills that the Lone Ranger led the fight against the powerful and ruthless Drexel Syndicate, and it was only his strength and courage that made possible the victory of right over might. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Deadwood. Hail, Silver! Hooray! Deadwood City boomed with gold mines on all sides. Those who didn't own mines spent their time panning the precious dust from the countless mountain streams. Jed Kerner owned the bank in town and his vaults were almost bulging with the wealth that had been stored for safekeeping. In Kerner's office sat a handsomely dressed man, an Easterner, sitting at ease, smoking a large cigar. I thought we understood each other, Kerner. Uh, we do. I'm on your side, Mr. Drexel, all the way on your side. I wanted to hear you say that. Just remember that the Drexel Mining Syndicate made you what you are. Well, I don't know as I'd go so far as to say that, Mr. Drexel. Colonel, if you doubt my statement, I'll take someone else in Deadwood, set him up in a bank, and his rise to importance will match your fall. Now, don't mistake what I said, Mr. Drexel. I'm on your side. You're going to be on my side. All the way, Colonel. That's understood, isn't it? <laughs> sure thing. Very well. Now, there's some stubborn men around here. Stubborn? Individualists. Men who feel that they're better off handling their claims on a small scale instead of selling out to my syndicate. At your price? At uh, my price. Well, uh, <clears throat> anything I can do to help, Mr. Drexel... Now we're getting someplace. There are men up in the hills who work their property for a week, two weeks, or a month, and then come here to put their gold in your bank. Yes. I understand that most of them make their trips on scheduled days, is that right? Uh, some of them. In fact, lots of them. Uh, some come to town every Saturday... Others every second Monday, and so on. I want to know who those men are. You mean... I already know about some of them. I want to know about the others. Several of them are working property that I'd like to buy. Property that I intend to buy. Hey, uh, I don't know as I should give you that sort of information. It'd be dangerous, maybe, if that information got out. Why? Huh? Why do you think it'd be dangerous if someone knew when Josh Baker came to town or Ned Teller? Uh, there's uh, plenty of outlaws around here, Mr. Drexel. If they knew those things, they could waylay the miners. They could, couldn't they? Mr. Drexel. I think we understand each other, Kerner. Now let's go over that list. A few days later, trouble broke out in the mountain trails outside of town. Rain up there! Oh, oh! Hey, what's this? We'll take that gold. Masked robbers. Why, you ornery... Never mind the talk. 
Just hand over the dust. Hey, you, rain up. I'm highwayman. Leave me be, you ornery crook. Get your hands up. We'll take the gold and let you live, or drill you and then take the gold. It's up to you. Come on there. Come on. If they catch us, they'll rob us, old horse. Get along there. They're shooting at me. The dirty coyotes. Get up. Get up there. Oh, they got me. The sudden outburst of banditry made every mountain path a trail of danger. In the cafe, everyone was talking about the work of the gold thieves, especially Josh Billings. He had his wounded arm in a sling. Something's got to be done. I'm for organizing the vigilantes or something. Why, I was talking to Hank, and he said he had over $3,000 stolen. Look at me. For the past six months, I've been riding into town each fortnight with $1,000 in gold. And really, 1000 I ain't stretching the sum like Hank did. Those critters didn't give me a chance. They don't give anyone a chance. They just ride up and one grabs your reins and another throws a gun on you. And it... Uh, howdy, stranger. I didn't notice you standing there. Hasn't anyone been able to describe these outlaws? No. That is, uh, not very much of them. They keep their faces covered. Uh, by the way, stranger, who are you? Well, I've been in town as long as most of you men, and I feel the same way you do. Something should be done and done quickly. Yes, but what? You're Josh Billings, aren't you? That's my name. Have you met Clark Drexel? Drexel? Sure I have. He come here to take charge of his syndicate business when his agent was jailed. Uh, how did you meet Drexel? Uh, he tried to buy out my property, but I wouldn't sell to him. He strikes me as being an influential man. Sure he is, and he's rich, too. Why don't you ask him to help organize your vigilantes? Um, I don't know about that. I've heard a lot about Drexel. I'm sure he'd be glad to help you. I don't know. What do you think, Pete? Uh, I reckon Drexel would help us all right. Only, well, he tried to buy me out, too. Did he? Did he sell? Not at his price. I don't know what there is about him, but I... Well, I don't like to say anything, but I wouldn't feel that I could trust him too far. Why? I said enough. How do I know you're not a friend of his? And for that matter, how do we know that this here stranger's not one of the highwaymen? Why, Ginger, we don't. Uh, you didn't tell us your name, stranger. What are you doing? Where are you from? You haven't asked the most important question. What's that? Who stole your money and how you're going to get it back? Those are the questions to answer. That's the point. How are we going to get it back? I see the banker at that table in the corner. Why don't you ask him if he can't give you a suggestion? Uh, there's an idea. Come on, Pete, let's ask Banker Kerner. Come on. I don't know how Mr. Kerner can help us, Pete, but he might have some ideas. I... Hold on. That stranger never did tell us who he was. Thunderation, Josh, you're right. He just sidestepped our questions like a brain steer dodging a saddle. And now he's gone. Gone? Look, see for yourself. Pete, there was something downright odd about that hombre. Mighty curious. Mighty curious. That night in the camp, which was hidden in the hills outside of town, the Lone Ranger met Tonto and discussed the sudden outbreak of robberies. While I was in town, Tonto, I learned quite a bit about the men who have been held up. Uh, what you learn, Kimasabi? Yeah, these men have several things in common. Mm, what that? They all keep their money in Kerner's bank. And every one of them comes to Deadwood on scheduled days to do his banking. Mm, what else you learn? Well, I talked with several men who don't keep their cash in the bank. None of them has been bothered. A Kerner not in Deadwood very long. He came here and started his bank just after the first discovery of gold. It took quite a while for him to get established. Isn't that right? First, the men didn't want to put their cash in his bank. They felt it would be safer to hide it in their homes. Then the Drexel men came here and the robbery started. Uh, where'd you hear that? Talking to the men in town. I told how a gang of crooks started breaking into houses and stealing the savings of the miners. Those crooks were never caught. And um, when robberies stop? And they stopped when the men decided that the gold would be safer in the Kerner Bank. Oh. Now there's another outbreak of gold robberies. In each case, the victim is someone who has money in the bank. There's one more point that's especially important. What's that? Every man who has been robbed has had a chance to sell his property to Clark Drexel. There, Tonto, was the answer. Ah, uh, Drexel Peller behind robbery. I'm sure of it. Just as I'm sure he was one of the organizers of the Black Arrow. We not got proof. No, we haven't proof yet. 
Perhaps we can get it. And how we get proof. There never proved Drexel and Black Arrow. No, there wasn't. Now it'll be almost impossible to jail him for that conspiracy. But maybe we can prove that he's behind these outlaws. Mm. How you do that? I know when I wear my own clothes and my mask, I'm known around Deadwood. Isn't that right? Drexel himself would know me. And there are others, too. Yes. But from now on, I'll have to keep this disguise on. I know you go to the sheriff. Tell him what we hope to do and have him ready to help us. I'm going to call on Kerner, the banker. It was quite late at night, but the banker was still sitting up, reading by the light of a fancy lamp that glowed softly from the middle of the table. He thought he heard a creaking floorboard. He lowered his book and turned slowly toward the door. Who is it? Who is it? Steady, Mr. Kerner. I don't want anyone else in the house to hear us. What, what does this mean? Who are you? I'm here to help you, if you want help. Help me? A lot of men who bank with you have been robbed. Uh, yes. And the robbers haven't been found. No. You want them found, don't you? What do you mean? Well, if this continues, everyone might stop coming to town with his gold. That would mean the loss of business for your bank. You uh, don't want that to happen, do you? Of course not. Then you do want help. I don't know you. For all I know, you're one of the crooks. I... Oh, I know when I saw you. You were in the cafe a little while ago. That's right. You, uh, you wouldn't tell your name. I still won't, because my name doesn't matter. Some of them didn't think you're one of the robbers. Maybe you are. In that case, you'd be no worse off than you are now. Huh? The law hasn't been able to stop those robbers yet. If I'm one of them, you've nothing to lose by letting me help you. On the other hand, you might benefit if you want the robbery stopped, the robbers caught. But, but you... What can you do? Before I can do anything, I want you to give me the names of men who bring gold dust to your bank. I can't give you that information. The outlaws seem to have it, so there's nothing to lose by giving it to me. I might be able to put an end to the robberies. Or uh, do you want people to know that you're unwilling to help? But I tell you, Everyone I... will realize that there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. I... I don't know. Quickly, man, do I get the names or shall I spread the word that you won't help in stopping the losses? All right. I'll give you the names. I came as soon as I was sure he'd gone, Drexel. I had no choice. I had to give him the names of the men. Mm. I can understand that. Well, it's all right. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you understand. You don't know who he was? Uh, no, he's a stranger in town. I see. <laughs> Tall man? Uh, yes. Well... How did you know? Tell me, did he uh, have a white horse? I uh, couldn't be sure, but it was light. It might have been white. Good. You gave him a list of names of men who bring gold dust from the surrounding hills to your bank. I had to. Very well, Kenner. Now, here's what I want you to do. Tell everyone about that call. Let everyone know that this stranger came to you and demanded that list. Spread the word that he's the highwayman. That man wore a disguise. What? He's the Lone Ranger. And because of that call on you, he'll be shot on sight. in the cafe. Me too. Now we know who we're hunting. Shoot him on sight. We'll get him. Too bad we can't let the men out in the hills know. You tell them when they get here who we're hunting for. Why did you send for us, Drexel? It's dangerous for us to be so close to town. Jake, I think the Lone Ranger's after you boys. <laughs> I don't say he's got us. He might call on each of the prospectors and warn them about the robberies. He'll have to do a lot of riding. They're scattered through the hills from here to kingdom come. You'll do well to be careful, nonetheless. Meanwhile, I've handled things in town so as everyone thinks this hombre, whom I'm sure is the Lone Ranger, will be shot on sight for the robberies. <laughs> shot on sight. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Jake and Bat, under orders from Clark Drexel, leaped to their saddles and spurred their horses from the shelter of rocks beside the mountain trail. Rain up there! We want you! Will you take that there gold? No, no! Let me alone! Let me be! Take it, partner! No! You didn't slug him too hard, did you? Ah, just wrapped him from the saddle. You got the dust? Sure. Let's clear out, then. We got three days to wait before the next gen is due. Come on. Get up there. Get up! Get up! For several minutes, the prospector lay stunned. As he recovered consciousness, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up at his side. Steady, Silver. Oh, Steady, boy. Then watch Tonto in case the outlaws decide to come back. Um, you watch him. Don't hit me again. The Lone Ranger wore his own familiar hat and shirt instead of the outfit he had worn in town. His face was covered by a mask, and the false beard he had worn had been removed. He dismounted and crouched to the side of the fallen man. Now, you're not badly hurt, just stunned. Sorry we couldn't reach you sooner. You masked. Did you see the men who robbed you? Yes. But who are you? Consider me a friend. Did those men have their faces covered? Yeah, all but their eyes. They had bandanas over their faces and their hats were pulled down low. Here, let me help you up. Robbed. All my dust from the past month. You're going to get it back, Vince. You know my name? Yes. Just as I know the names of a lot of other prospectors. But how? I also know what trail each man uses to get to Deadwood. The day he's due to make the trip. Who are you? Here. Want a drink of water? Uh, not now. I'm all right, thanks. But that mask, I... Vince, let me ask you a couple of questions about the robbers. Did one of them wear a battered black hat? Yes, he did. Otto, hand me the old hat. Ah, here. Here, hat. Thanks. Yeah. Was it like that one? Yeah. A black shirt, Otto. Ah, here. Here, shirt. That's right. He wore a shirt like that one, too. Thanks, Vince. That proves one thing to me. But I don't understand. You right on now? Sure, I'm all right. My head's been wrapped before and I get over it. But those ornery polecats got my gold. If you want to get that gold back, do just what I say. What's that? Go to Deadwood and report the robbery to the banker. Tell just how the robbers were dressed. I'll do that, all right. But uh, most important, don't say anything about seeing me. No? Why not? If you do, Vince, you'll probably spoil my chance to get your gold dust back. <laughs> I've already forgot that I saw you. On your way. Get up there. Get up. Steady, big fella. Now, Tonto. Kimitsabe, why you ask question about what outlaw wear? You realize what his answers prove? No, Tonto not savvy. Well, after Kerner saw me in the disguise with a black hat and a black shirt, those outlaws changed their clothes. Oh. When Josh and Hank and Pete were robbed, the outlaws wore colored shirts. I'm satisfied, Tonto, that Kerner is working with the outlaws. And we can be sure that Drexel is. Ah. And now what we do? Now, Kimosabi, it's your turn to act. We've got to follow a trail. Ah. Starts here. The trail of the men who slugged Vince Perkins, and it might be hard to follow. Furthermore, we've got to be on the watch for men from town. Almost any one of them would shoot us on sight. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Me study ground for tracks, and then we start on trail. When Vince reported what had happened, there was a fresh hue and cry. Now everyone in town had a fairly good description of the highwaymen. In the cafe, Josh had his say in no uncertain language. I knew it, Dad, not it. I knew it, and I told the boys as much. That hombre stood right where you're standing, Vince. I talked to him just as I'm a talking to you. And I suspected at the time that he was the critter. He wore that black hat and shirt, though, and that's what throwed me off the track. When he stuck us up, he had on different clothes. Well, if I ever get my hands on him, Josh, I'll sure make him sorry for the way he handled me. Feel my head. Huh. Got a lump the size of a hen's egg where he wrapped me. Then he robbed me besides. We get him when we'll all have some settling to do. Well, boys, I hear there was another robbery. Oh. Howdy, Mr. Drexel. Vince here was stuck up. Yeah, stuck up and knocked down. The gold around here is attracting all kinds of outlaws to the Black Hills. It's going to be pretty dangerous country for men who have to work alone like you men do. All we ask is a fair chance with these thieving snakes. Boys, I hate to say this. You hate to say what? Things aren't going to get any better. I've seen boom towns like this before. Once the outlaws move in, there's no chance for men like you. It takes a syndicate to quell the outlaws. What can a syndicate do that we can't? Well, if all your mines were operated by one organization like the Drexel Mining Syndicate, we could improve roads, bring in machines... Run a spur from the nearest railroad and hire men enough to wipe out banditry. 
Better spread that around as the opinion of a man who knows. Huh? Yeah. Meaning that you haven't given up your notion of buying us out, eh? Huh? Well, that's the idea, Josh. At your own price. My price is fair. Any one of the claims might peter out to nothing at all. I have to take a gamble, you know. Well, thanks, but we'll hang on for a while longer. Yep, that's the way I feel about it. Well, I'll be around, Deadwood, for a while if you change your mind. Good evening, boys. <laughs> I don't like Drexel, and I'm getting more so every time I see him. Meanwhile, in the light of a half moon, Tonto walked slowly along the ground, the Lone Ranger following and leading Scout and Silver. The horses had their hoofs wrapped in cloth to soften the sound of their steps. Every bit of Tonto's Indian cunning came into play as he followed the trail of the outlaws. He sometimes crept on hands and knees, feeling the depressions on the ground. Sometimes he struck a match and in the momentary light made sure he was still on the trail. It was slow work, but the Indian and masked man kept on until well after midnight. Then Silver suddenly halted. Braced his hoofs and stood without motion. Hold on, Tonto. Silver's given us a warning. Ah. Silver always know when we follow trail. All right, old fella. We know what you're trying to say. Men we want are camp not far ahead. Tonto, remember this. We've got to take those men alive. We can't shoot as they can. Hmm. But they'll not hesitate to shoot. Now we leave the horses here. Let them have it, Bat! Right! Come! Thought she'd catch us off guard, huh? Well, bad. it looks like they've got theirs. Keep your gun ready, though. Right. We'd better put a few more bullets in them to make sure. Cut them, Silver! <laughs> oh, look out, that horse! Get the guns, Tonto! They fixed them! All oh, right, Silver, that does it, old fella. You tricked us, you played bottom. That horse... You were too there. anxious to kill us. You didn't take time to aim well. Uh, now, wait. We're just a couple of prospectors. Get that one rope, Tonto. Uh, but wait a minute I'll now. take care of this one. Now, hold on, listen to me. I was trying to tell you... There's no use trying to rob us. We've got nothing worth taking. We're not here to rob you. Well, I thought you was. That's why I fired. This camp is the end of a trail that started where Vince was knocked from the saddle. There. Oh. I guess that'll hold you. Uh-huh. This one tied, too. Ouch. Yeah, be careful, Injun. Them ropes are tight. And that's the way Tonto want them. What are you going to do with this? You've got nothing on us? We will have when we find the gold you've stolen. Well, you've got the wrong men, mister. Never Mer- mind that. I'm going to turn you over to Mr. Kerner. Save your breath to explain to him. You, you what? Who'd you say? The banker. I keep an eye on them, Tonto, while I look around their camp. The Lone Ranger built a fire and searched the outlaws' camp while Jake and Bat kept their inward satisfaction from showing on their faces. They knew that they'd be safe if the masked man turned them over to Jed Kerner, the banker. Later that same night... Out cabin, out cabin. Just wait till I light the lamp here. Who is it, anyway? I brought some prisoners for you. Prisoners? Thanks a lot. There are the thieves, Mr. Kerner. Get in there. All right, you needn't shove us. What do, you, what do you mean? These two are the outlaws who have been stealing gold from the prospectors. I can't believe it. It's nonetheless true. There's a saddlebag full of gold dust. I took it from their camp. But you were masked. When I called on you the other day, I wore different clothes. Since then, one of these crooks dressed the way I did, so I'd be accused of the robberies. He's your man, though. What do you say about this? There's not a word of truth in it, Mr. Kerner. Me and Bad Lawford have been trying for months to find a claim without any luck. And while we're in camp, this masked armory comes up with a redskin and ropes us. That's how it was. He's the guilty one. After all, you're a stranger around here. These two men have been around town for some time. Mr. Kerner, it'll be easy to prove that these two are the outlaws. In the first place, you can let the men they've robbed talk to them. I'm sure somebody will recognize their voices. Uh, Who else knows about this capture? I... Brought them directly to you. I see. Here. You better take one of my guns and be ready in case one of them makes a break. I'm going to untie Jake's hands and show you something. Oh, well, uh, all right. You can handle a gun, can't you? Oh, sure. Now, uh, you just wait one minute, Kerner, and I'll remove all doubt about who robbed the prospect. Stand still and get your hands up. What? Kerner. You heard me. Good work, Kerner. Reach over here, Jake, and I'll cut the ropes. Kerner, are you working with these crooks? Jake, does anyone else know about you and Bat? Only that red skin. <laughs> there. Jake, now you cut Bat's ropes. Where's the Indian now? I heard the masked man tell him to go and get Clark Drexel. I expect Drexel will be here any minute with the Indian. Good. Drexel will be glad to be in on this. With his influence in Deadwood, we'll have no trouble at all in convincing the sheriff that we had to shoot this man and his Indian friend to capture them. So that's the plan. Well, at least those prospectors will get their gold back. Even if you shoot me, you'll have to tell the sheriff you have the gold. Kerner, we worked for that gold. We earned it. 
It was promised. Easy, Jake. We needn't say all the gold was found. Just enough to prove that we got the right men. You still won't have everything solved, Colonel. No. No, Drexel's plan will fail. Now that the outlaws are captured, as you'll make everyone think they are, there won't be any more robberies. So the prospectors won't be forced to sell out to Clark Drexel. Drexel will have new plans. Colonel, I think you've said about all you need to say. But Now I'll uh, take back my gun. Stay where you are. I had to find some way to prove that you and Drexel were behind these two crooks. That's why I let you borrow my gun. Get your hands up. Stand back or I'll shoot. Go on and shoot. Let him have it, Colonel. Fire. I will. What the... Try it again. The gun's not loaded. I'll fix him. Not so fast. Oh, I'll show you. You get back. Uh, we're here. We'll take over. Hey, where you are? Let me at the critter. Uh, me first. They plugged my shoulder with the bullet. They We've been framed. Out. Wait, boys. Let me explain. Uh, You've done plenty of explaining. We heard it all right outside the house. Everything all right, Tato? Oh, plenty uh, good. Uh, give me a chance. It was Drexel. He planned it. He made me help him. You'll all get the chance to talk in court. I think you'll find a mighty unfriendly jury. Masked man, back at your camp, I heard you tell Tonner to go and get Drexel. But instead he shows up with Josh and Pete and the others. Tonner knew what I meant. That's why he got the prospectors and followed me to Kerner's house. We sure will be glad to take these critters to the calaboose, won't we, boys? Hey, sure. Well, then you won't need Tonner and me. Come along, Kimosabe. Won't need you? Why, great guns, mister, we always need men like you. Hey, stop him! We got to give him a share of our gold. He's got a reward coming. Get him up, The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 